Is your nose stuffy and you need a quick way to open up your nose? In this video, I'll reveal 7 insanely simple ways to unblock your stuffy nose. There are many ways to clear up your blocked nose quickly and relatively cheaply or even for free. Stick to the end and I'll give you one more bonus tip that I guarantee you'll get excited about. Hi, I'm Dr. Stephen Park, an ENT surgeon and sleep medicine doctor with a passion to help you breathe better and sleep better so that you can enjoy living life again. Number one has been around for thousands of years, which is saline or salt water. Neti pot nasal irrigation has been found in Indian culture for thousands of years. Many people swear by this method to improve nasal breathing and general health, but there are some downsides to using nasal saline, which I'll talk about in a little while. You can buy pre-made saline at the pharmacy or make your own. At the pharmacy, you'll see many different options. Make sure you get the right concentration, which is 0.9%. This is the same concentration as what your body has, and it's what's given to patients in the hospital. But in pharmacies, you'll see 0.65%. And the reason for this is that you have additional additives and preservatives, which makes up for the rest to get 0.9%. But watch out for many of the ingredients, such as the antibacterial benzoconium chloride and phenocarbonyl, which can damage tissues, including paralyzing the cilia. Phenocarbonyl is also used to treat headlights. Some people even get addicted to nasal saline irrigation, but it's thought that it's from the additives such as benzoconium rather than the salt itself. So try to avoid any nasal saline product that has any additives. There's one brand, Neomed, which I have no financial disclosures to, that comes as a dry powder that you mix in the container that comes with the package. This one has no preservatives. Also, avoid hypertonic saline, which is saltier water. This will really decongest your nose well, but it's been shown to paralyze your nasal mucosa cilia. Once in a while is okay, like when you go swimming in salt water, which is about 3 to 4%, but regular use is probably not a good idea. However, the most convenient way is to make it yourself. Take one cup of distilled or bored water and then cool the body temperature and then add half a teaspoon of non-iodinized salt. You can also add half a teaspoon of baking powder. Mix and use a neti pot kettle, a turkey basing syringe, a large syringe, or even a dental irrigator device. It doesn't matter which one you use, just find the one that you like using. For those of you who never tried nasal saline irrigation, place your head over the sink and turn your head to one side. Insert whatever device you're using inside your top nostril and squeeze, press, pour, or activate. The saline should go around the back common space of the nose and come out the other bottom nostril. You should close off your palate from your nose so that the saline comes out through your other nostril and not through your mouth. There are some reports of people with higher rates of sinusitis if they irrigate the sinuses for a long period of time and that their cilia were more likely to be paralyzed. It's thought that this is due to the preservatives and not the salt content itself. So again, stay away from anything with preservatives or antibiotics. Number two is capsaicin, which is the main ingredient found in peppers that gives it a spiciness. You can mix half a cup of apple cider vinegar and a quarter to a half teaspoon of cayenne pepper and add this to two to three cups of boiled water. Drip a towel over your head on top of the bowl for steam inhalation. It's interesting to note that capsaicin has been found also to help people with migraines too. Number three are certain essential oils, which are known to help open up your nasal passageways. Eucalyptus and peppermint oils can help lower inflammation in the nose, as well as to have antimicrobial activity. Other essential oils that were found to be helpful in this review paper are anise oil, bitter fennel fruit oil, and tea tree oil. In general, these oils are breathed in through a nebulizer. And in this paper, they outline various clinical studies showing effective results for conditions such as swimmer's ear, wheezing, and acute bronchitis. Number four is breath holding. This method was popularized by Brutego breathing practitioners. There are many different ways of doing this, but basically you hold your breath for as long as possible. By doing this, you're activating your sympathetic nervous system. This constricts the blood vessels in your nose, opening up your nose temporarily. This can be effective for asthma attacks as well. Number five is exercise. This helps to open up your nose by the same mechanism as number four, which is to turn on your sympathetic nervous system. This constricts the swollen membranes inside your nose. This makes sense because you need to get more air into your lungs when you exercise. And some people report success after doing push-ups. Number six is vitamin D, and it's not just for strong bones. It's a hormone that's important for pretty much everything in your body, including your nose. It's been shown that people with nasal allergies have much lower levels of vitamin D. And in general, people in developed nations spend too little time outdoors, and we don't eat enough food with the highest levels of vitamin D which are in seafood such as salmon, herring, sardines, cod liver oil, and tuna. For most Americans, getting more sun exposure is the best way to get enough vitamin D. I'll talk in a later video about the scare tactics doctors are drumming up about skin cancer from too much sun exposure. I have to say that personally, 
Ever since I got my vitamin D level above 50, my spring and fall allergies are almost all gone. There's also strong evidence that having higher levels of vitamin D can protect you against common respiratory infections, including coronavirus. You can find links to many of these studies below. Number seven, there have been a number of published studies on the usefulness of acupuncture for nose congestion. As an example, here's a prospective randomized, double-blinded, placebo-controlled trial from 2009, and in layman's terms, a very sophisticated, high-level study. It showed that acupuncture was much better than sham acupuncture points for improving nasal congestion for at least 30 minutes. You can see the three true points in the treatment group and the three sham points in the control groups. The experimenters and the patients didn't know which was the treatment or the control. Only the acupuncturists knew which is which. Interestingly, they also had each group try a strong nasal decongestant spray like Afrin. Surprisingly, the true acupuncture group had positive responses that were within the range of responses seen in the nasal decongestant group. So this is a technique that you can do easily almost anywhere. It's a variation of acupuncture called acupressure. Take your finger on both sides, press on your face just beside your nostrils, and rub in small circles for about 30 seconds. If you have a stuffy nose right now, pause the video and try it right now. Then place the results in the comments area below. Make sure to press the play button to finish watching this video. And here's a bonus tip, have sex. During sexual arousal, you're activating the parasympathetic nervous system, which causes engorgement of the blood vessels in your body for both men and women. But orgasm is activated by the sympathetic nervous system, which constricts blood vessels. So this is why many people report being able to breathe much better through the nose after having sex. The problem with all these eight methods I mentioned is that they don't last. If you want to find out which options are more long-lasting solutions for your stuffy nose, click on the video up here.